Hello everyone, welcome back to another For Honor video. Uh, before the full game comes out, I kind of want to make a little video covering some more things that I thought were interesting or some things that I learned here and there from playing the open beta. I did again invest some time in the alpha, did not play much of that sadly. I did play a fair amount of the closed beta. The open beta, I decided to dedicate some time to at least one hero, learn their playstyle of some sort and kind of try to get a grasp on overall what to do with this person and kind of how to engage her in fights, things like that. I felt like learning one character would help me learn the other characters eventually down the line. So I kind of just wanted to learn Kensei and or Kensei and focus more on him and have a bit more, again, of an understanding of how he uh, works. And again, um, I just want to point something out before I go further in depth in the video. I kind of hope they do something about the Warden because he hit me twice and those upper hand attacks take 40-40, so it's 80% of your health. Uh, I feel like that needs to be changed because that is a little nuts. Uh, I kind of hope it goes down. At least make it, I don't know, like mm, 30, 30, 20, 25, 25. At least take half, not 80%. That sounds a little nuts. But uh, anyways, going on back to the video. Um, Kente, yes, I think he's extremely fun. He is very versatile. You could, I feel like any character could really get into him or any player could really get into him. He has a good, uh, he has a good combo chain. He has good counters. He has good defense, good armor. He could take a good amount of hits. Also, watch your surroundings. That little clip is always just a reminder of things to not do while playing this game. Have map awareness. Have spatial awareness. Know exactly where you're standing and make sure that uh, you're not, you know, just randomly having two people come up and hit you from behind. But this is also the new mode called Elimination. So this is basically just 4v4. Whoever kills the other team and your team gets around best of three. And the thing that makes it a little bit different is that there's pickups around the map that give you bonuses. So as far as I remember and as far as I've seen, there's three bonuses. There's an attack uh, bonus or damage bonus. There's defense bonus and there's a health bonus that just gives you health if you pick it up. The defense bonus just gives you like a health shield. So whatever health you have, it'll stack on top of that and pretty much guard a certain amount of attacks until that's depleted. Uh, it's pretty useful for certain fights. Oh yeah, there's also this speed boost, which makes you makes you just like Sonic. You just kind of, you know, whiz around the map. It's a uh, fun. It's a little nuts. But uh, anyways, the gameplay that you're seeing here is pretty much just strictly elimination. I thought that this was my favorite mode so far in the open beta. I think in the full game I might play this the most. I love Dominion, but my problem with Dominion is, is the whole fact of people grouping up and attacking one person. You see to see four people just go and like oh, I'm gonna kill this one guy and then they just kill this one guy and then four people go to another guy and then another and another and you can never really get this sense of oh this one guy's here and I want to fight him but then the enemy team comes out of nowhere and they just stampede you uh, it never seems to fail it always happens so I like elimination because of the fact that it starts you off in a 1v1 at least you get some time to do this majority of the time the other people uh, your teammates or enemies spawn adjacent on the completely uh, opposite end of the map, so it gives you some time to at least fight. Uh, there are some people that pretty much just avoid who they're fighting and go to help a teammate out, which, again, uh, it's a little stupid. I hope they have some sort of implementation that makes it so that uh, when you're doing these 1v1s, you have to stay in them for a certain amount of time before you have to exit, because I think that that's a little ridiculous. Uh, I don't I don't know what they would do to do that. Maybe insert, uh, insert some type of barrier surrounding you guys to be able to do that. Uh, also, uh, noted in this, uh, something that I feel like everyone should know just in case you have no idea or are uninformed, uh, in any shape or form. In this mode, if you execute someone, they cannot be revived. This mode is also pretty, uh, revive heavy. A lot of people like to make sure that once they kill somebody, they will run, again, completely to the other side of the map to revive their allies. Just like that, this other guy just ran around the complete side of the building to get the revive on that guy. Which, um, didn't really, I guess, pan out. Again, it was a 2v3, and then someone ended up quitting, sadly, at the end of the game. Which, again, another issue. Servers. I think this is going to plague the game tomorrow on launch. There's going to be a lot of server issues, a lot of crashing, and I'm pretty sure that this is going to make or break the game tomorrow. There's going to be a lot of anger, a lot of angry community tomorrow when this game comes out. Uh, I hate to say that, but I hope that Ubisoft proves me wrong, because I love Ubisoft games. I play a lot of them. I play the Tom Clancy series pretty heavily, and... The sad part about that is a lot of those games don't have great servers when they launch. They just kind of fall apart on launch and just don't seem to go throughout their lifetime. Or, well, they don't really get good until months down the line, a.k.a. Rainbow Six Siege, which took months of development to actually get on, you know, and actually gather this community. Because for the, pretty much the first, I'd say, like, half year that it was out, there was a good amount of people that were playing it. But it wasn't a lot. Finding a lobby, I remember finding a lobby for the first month took about five minutes. 
every single time you would queue up at least five minutes to find a game that would last probably two or three minutes because teammates would quit or the match would just end prematurely for some reason whatsoever. So it was pretty rough. But then around summertime of that following year or the next year, the community just blew up and there were tons of people. You would find a match in like a minute or two. So hopefully this game gets the same uh, same treatment, the same love that I hope Rain that you know Rainbow Six Siege was given. Hopefully they give it. I know that they're giving it sort of the season pass type of uh, DLC that they're giving it as well so that all the characters are free. The best thing about this, though, is that you do not need to buy them. Uh, you can only buy them for customization. You can play them straight out the gate and use them. I think that's neat. I think that that's very, uh, very nice. Uh, in some shape or form, I do hope, I wish that uh, Rainbow Six Siege did that. I think that would be nice to let people at least play these people without having to buy them. You know, if you wanted to customize their weapons, then you would have to fork out some renown to get them. I think that's an interesting system, and I hope that that maybe is implemented sometime into uh, Season... I don't even know what I think it's season two or three right now going on for Rainbow Six Siege. Sorry if I, I have no idea what, um, how it is. But anyways, the <laughs> Kensei, again, once I, I was saying, I got off track. That seems to happen a lot. He is a character that I hope a lot of people get into. Uh, he doesn't seem to be very played. I think that he's very counterable. He's, he's fun. Again, he's very easy to play, but compared to the other characters in the game, he can be used and be very very strong but he seems to be good to fight against fun to fight against and fun to play as unlike some other characters that just seem to be very good at doing one thing specifically and nothing else like the berserker per se who has that as you saw it this uh, attack where he just spins in a circle and that takes more than half of your health if you're not blocking or if you can't block the first attack you just pretty much get slaughtered for the rest of the attack again for Honor comes out tomorrow. Uh, hopefully, we'll see how it goes. I'm hoping for a great launch. I'm hoping that there's a big community playing it. I will not be getting it tomorrow, sadly. Uh, as far as I know, we'll see. I love this game. I think it's amazing. But the problem with it is, is I don't think that it would be worth forking out the $60 and playing with maybe one person. For you know, I, actually, I don't even know anyone else that's getting it that I uh, know at the moment. So I kind of want to wait to see if anyone I know gets it so that we could have some sort of group to play with and make it the experience that I want it to be or the experience that I feel like it deserves, which is a co-op experience, you know, multiple, to play with friends, to have this just not playing with randoms. It's it's good to work together and have this coordination when it comes to these team fights that might happen or occur, things like that. Again, I do think that it's a very fun game. The class system is very great. The heroes are very great. Cannot wait for the remaining heroes to come out uh, down the line later this year. Hopefully some variation is inserted and we see some interesting characters that pretty much change the way you fight some people um the last two last three characters even are up on youtube right now you can watch some videos watch some gameplay see how they are the long the lawbringer is pretty interesting his uh one of his executions is pretty brutal it's something you definitely should check out sometime soon but i hope you enjoyed the video and once again i will be uploading sometime this week most likely tomorrow smite season four is out so check this videos out there.